All right, so you guys seem to like some of these couch videos, so we thought we'd do another one, and the topic for today is learning German in Germany. And stick around to the end, because Camille has convinced me to do a German language reveal. You're not going to want to miss that. Quick disclaimer before we start. Uh, we got some comments last time about us interrupting each other. That is intended. This is a conversation. It's not an awkward TED talk or news presentation. Right. Like we're going to be doing that a little bit. Right. So if you don't like that, maybe don't watch. <laughs> we haven't rehearsed this or anything. So it's it, this is just a back and forth. This is just our opinions and views. Yeah. So in this video today, we're going to be talking about how we learn to speak mm -hmm. German in Germany. We're going to be talking about where we started out when we moved to Munich. Right. We're also going to be talking about what we did to improve our German, where we are now, and we're going to give you a little sneak peek of what that sounds oh like, my what God. my current German <laughs> level sounds like, what your current German level sounds like. Right, hers is a lot better than mine, which is why I think you've added this segment. No, I was like originally like, oh no, it'll be such a good idea. People will be like really interested to hear what it sounds like, right. and now I'm really nervous and kind yeah. of want to cut it. Skip to this time code to see if we did it. We did. But a quick tangent before we go into kind of the full chronology of our language journey is something I want to talk about, which is the way that, especially we as English uh, native speakers, like the USA and the UK and whatnot, I'm not going to speak for other people, but I imagine Canada's pretty similar. Um, we use the word fluent, and I really just want you to ask yourself, because I was wrong about this for a long time, and you introduced me to a better way of thinking about languages, but we often think about languages in this binary, right? Not fluent and fluent. And so I'll ask yourself, if you don't speak another language, just think about your native tongue. When did you become fluent? Like, were you five? Were you 10? Is it when you became a lawyer? Like, at what point did you become fluent in English? And I think you'll realize there's absolutely no way of answering that question, right? Like, I think five-year-olds, they can kind of speak English, but are they fluent? I don't know. And the word fluent is just so broad. It's so all-encompassing. You can speak the language, and that just really doesn't mean anything at all. And so there's a much better way of conceptualizing languages, yeah. and it's going to be the framework for pretty much this whole journey uh, as we talk about where we were, what we could do. And hey, even when we have conversations with yeah. like other foreigners in the area, yeah. it's always based on what? The suffering levels okay so if you are a foreigner living in Europe you know this skip it I don't care um, it's <laughs> so the, salty today. the common <laughs> European reference for languages no the common European framework <laughs> I can never remember the yeah. full acronym It's something really dry yeah something really dry anyway so there are basically six levels for every European language, mm -hmm. right? There's A1, A2, the beginner levels, B1, B2, the intermediate levels, and C1, C2, the advanced levels. And when you are learning one of these European languages, mm -hmm. languages, you are categorized into one of these levels. And they very specifically say what you can do, what you can understand right. at those levels. And it's really wonderful because it's very action-based, right? Exactly. We don't have this like really vague, are you fluent or are you not fluent? <laughs> what does it mean? Mm -hmm. And instead it's like, can you order a sandwich? Can you listen and hear the train conductor say that the, tra the train has gone from track 28 to 32? Can you understand that? That's A1. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. So the A levels, like Ben just said, you can talk about things that are sort of like very tangible, mm -hmm. very in front of you. You can't really speak about the past or present. You can't speak yeah. about abstract stuff. Things that are in front of you. You can go right. to the grocery store, order at a restaurant, mm -hmm. those types of can things. Can you point at it and get by with some gestures? A1 beginner. Mm -hmm, very basic, about 500 to 1,000 words in your vocabulary. Really? Mm -hmm. a, it's 500 mm. for A1, I think it's 1,000 for A2. Oh, wow. Uh, B2, uh, B1, B2 mm -hmm. is intermediate. At this point, you can talk about things in the past, present, and future. You mm -hmm. can talk about abstract things to an extent. At this yep. point, you need to be able to sort of listen to news broadca broadcasts, mm -hmm. read sort of middle school level texts, yeah. and be able to give your opinions about them, right. summarize them. Do you think you'd read, could you read Harry Potter in the B? levels do you think because everyone always uses harry potter yeah, as like why. a basis uh probably b2 i don't know i'm i I have my opinions about that because everybody's like, can you read Harry Potter? And it's like, but everybody knows the plot to Harry Potter. So it's Could you read the plot to Dune? Ah. So it's a lot of people reading Harry Potter who are intimately familiar with Harry Potter. Oh, uh, okay. Being like, oh yeah, I understand this. Hit enough. Okay. Anyway, C1, C2 at these levels. Um, so you can kind of function as a native, right? right? You can have Definitely it. read Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> you can uh, have a job. 
in Germany. You yes. can usually go to school. You can get around um, in the day to day without really any problem. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's B2 to get into university yeah. if you're a foreigner. And uh, not spoiler alert, you've been doing job interviews in German mm -hmm. and they usually ask for B2-ish mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. But that's not where we started. Mm -mm. So now that I've explained what the Sefer levels mm -hmm. are, hopefully we sort of understand the framework by which we're going to talk about yeah. our German language journey. Uh, where did you start? Uh, A0? Uh, absolutely nothing. Probably less than A0. Uh, growing up in England, I, I hadn't taken a second language. In America, I took Spanish mm -hmm. uh, for like a couple years. Uh, I had no interest in Germany. I couldn't have told you the different cities in Germany when I arrived here. I mean, okay, I'm good at maps. I could have told you that bit. Um, but overall, I, I could not. I mean, this is, I'll tell you, there's one memory I have, right? Where we, uh, we had landed from the Flughafen, a word I didn't know, and we'd gotten onto the train and we passed this big billboard coming into Munich and it had all the, just the words were so intimidatingly long and I couldn't even imagine how to pronounce them I mean they had umlauts and all kinds of stuff and uh, it was at that moment I wondered what on earth have we gotten ourselves into but more specifically uh, me <laughs> because you were not a zero yeah um, so I was about a two level when we got okay. here so I have to it's a much longer story uh, I'll try Go to be, I'll try to be brief but it all started when I was a child <laughs> Uh, All good stories. <laughs> a cold, misty day. I was three years old. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so um, my Oma is German. She grew up outside of Karlsruhe in a small village until she was 18, mm -hmm. moved to the United States. Um, so she speaks um, German and English as her native language. My Opa is not German, but he does speak German at a very high level, probably yeah. just past C2, because he right. just has spoken it with her every day. Well, he's a polyglot as well. 60 years, basically. Yeah. Cool he's dude. really impressive. He just turned 91. Oh, hi. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, so although, you know, my Oma and Opa speak German together every day, they never taught their children. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I never learned German. But I, I grew up kind of hearing them. I never learned anything, but I you know, heard them, was aware yeah. that she was German. And as a result, like most Americans, um, I had an interest, you know, in the language and the culture. Mm -hmm. So in middle school, when I had to choose a foreign language to learn, I just immediately chose German. I took it for four years and then stopped, as most American students do, and didn't think about it again until the year before we decided we were going to move to Munich, yeah. I decided that I should probably, you know, <laughs> you know, relearn German so that I could, you know, hit Rush the ground running. Right yeah. So I read about the C4 levels, which, you know, we just talked about. And I thought, well, I took four years of German. <laughs> Surely I am A2 at least, at least. maybe B1. So I uh, took a practice test to see what my level was. And I wasn't even A1. Which was you were really, A zero, just like me. Yeah, which was very disappointing. But, <laughs> but that's um, also not true. You were way further ahead than me. Yeah, I was because I had a had a very good teacher in middle school for two years, and I had a lot of like I had all of the A one grammar mm -hmm. subconsciously sort of uploaded and into a lot the of the back vocab of my brain, too. I'd say and a lot of the vocab. So I um, started. So using, why weren't you A one there? Yeah, so I started using well, basically because my listening skills and my speaking skills just right. weren't there. So I started doing this web app called Chatterbug, which I. I would highly recommend it's just like an effective really version of duolingo <laughs> it has an excellent srs system for grammar and vocab and yeah. then twice a week you do 45 minute lessons with a native speaker mm -hmm. um, like over skype so i did that for like eight months i did the srs system like 30 minutes did my two 45 mm -hmm. minute lessons a week and then i'd go to my oma and opa's house and i'd practice speaking with them for like two hours nice. so after doing that i was able to pass an a1 test yep. and an a2 test with the goethe institute in washington dc mm -hmm. And then we moved to Germany, so I came here with A2, um, and then sort of moving towards B1. Yeah, and you had the certificates. Yeah. You had just, all that done, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. And also, if you want uh, this, obviously this video is just about our language learning journey. If you want more of an opinionated sum up of the, the apps, uh, you know, I think you already heard your spicy opinion about Duolingo maybe not being so effective. Uh, we've got lots of opinions on that, but I think that's an entirely different video. Comment below if you're interested in our opinions on what resources to use. Though, if you listen to the story when we get to the next bit, I think you'll realize what resources we really liked as they play an integral role in, mm -hmm. in kind of the next part, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So what's what's the next part? What did we do to sort of continue our language learning once we were in Germany? Right. So I took a uh, I took a bit of a flower child uh, mentality, if you don't mind me saying, uh, and I thought immersion. I would just kind of arrive with nothing, and I would kind of 
do nothing and I would just learn it, you know, day to day. I'm steeped in it like tea. And uh, that's just what would happen. And I think a lot of people think that. And I think from, for maybe in other countries, that is how it works. Maybe that's possible. I am not speaking about anything other than my own experience learning in Munich, uh, a big German city. Uh, but so, if, you know, probably what I think is not applicable to other places. But for Munich, I think it is. And so what happened was about four months in of my immersion journey, uh, I actually hadn't spoken any German at all. And that's because in Germany, English is a very, very common second language. I mean, in their high school, depending on what track you're doing, and we're not getting into that right now, a lot of Germans end up taking two foreign languages to the B2 level, mm -hmm. which is very different than your language learning ability. I mean, even if you had been tested right after high school, you weren't B2, right? No, no, I was, I, I know I still wouldn't have even been A1. Just really? again, my speaking and my speaking listening skills speak. were awful. Actually, that's a good point. To Basically to non-existent. Write. Yeah, that the, the CIFA levels, the CEFA levels are very action oriented. Mm -hmm. If you can't speak it, if you can't hear it, and if you can't read it and understand it, if you can't do all of it, you don't count. Yep. And so you have to have all of those skills. Um, and so in my day-to-day -day life, I've learned none of those skills because the moment that a German would realize that I don't speak German, they just switch to English. And so I've been having four months worth of fully English conversations. Even when we went to go get our apartment lease, we went into the office and someone translated the document in real time uh, for us to sign. It was really nice of them, but it's, it was still possible for them to do. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a really important thing. So after about that amount of time, I realized I'd learned nothing. And okay, this is probably a really obvious thing I should have learned, but if you're not putting in effort, don't expect the world to become your language tutor. I mean, that's a full-time job and it costs money. So to expect everyone to just you know, hack through your crappy language mm -hmm. skills uh, when they've got a job to do. Even at like a restaurant or a bakery, like they want to sell you the bread and move on with their lives. They don't want to give you a half an hour discussion. So what I decided to do is flip my strategy. And instead of doing nothing, I jumped right into an immersive language learning course at the Goethe Institute, though there are many others. And I was doing five hours of German only language instruction every single day for about two months. Mm -hmm. And it melted my brain because I still <laughs> have, I'm a programmer as well. So it just felt like Oh, just a lot to keep in my head every day, uh, but it was awesome. Uh, it would, and it was very strange as well, because unlike learning a language in America, where you kind of learn Spanish, in my case, with a lot of English, uh, these uh, go-to courses, these immersion courses, it's all German all the time. The whole book is in German. The very first day when you introduce yourselves, it's in German, which is really paradoxical because I don't know any of it, but with a lot of gesturing and, uh, you know, they had a projector with the words, you figure it out. And so they, they're really stringent about making sure that it's only German. And I think that's really powerful. So you actually do get the immersion learning you're looking for. It just costs a bit of money and you have to put in the effort. And I think that's when I really started to see uh, everything change for me because I, uh, I did that to the A1 level and I passed my exam and I was an official A1 uh, language learner and I was moving towards A2 at that point. Regular immersion learning started to occur. Um, and this is kind of like a really cool joke. It's kind of what everyone, <laughs> a foreigner in the area will talk about is, it's almost like riding a bull. How long can you hold on before the German will realize that you're not very good and that they should just switch uh, to English? And so I think that's quite funny. And it, you know, instead of immediately, I was starting to get through some sentences. I was starting to order a sandwich and uh, just do it all in German. And it's, it's kind of like a really fun mark of, of pride for how long you can last in a, in a conversation. And so now that I put in that effort and I was working with people, they were working back with me. And I think immersion learning started to exist. Mm -hmm. and, and that kind of brings us to where you were because I'd finally caught up to you on day one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, when we came to Germany, like I said, I was A2, working mm -hmm. towards B1. So I immediately started teaching English um, English lessons. So I was going all around Munich, um, teaching mostly children, elementary level, but some high school level kids. And because of this, I was just hearing a lot of German. You know, I was attempting to replicate English lessons, like in an immersive sort of way. But when you're teaching, you know, a six-year-old, they're going to speak to you in German and there are some things you just have to say in German sometimes like it can't be helped so I ended up hearing a ton of German and getting a lot of practice in so after doing that starting in November when we moved mm -hmm. here um, I didn't put any effort in outside of you know just 
listening to German from yep. my students and kind of doing some interactions like in the day to day. Um, I took a B1 test. Mm -hmm. I barely passed it. I also didn't put any effort in yeah. other than what I had just said. So, you know, kind of tracks. Um, but right. so I was able to sort of, you know, immersion learning, but only really because like, like Ben said, yes. I had that base. Right. So when you hear people coming over here with nothing and they're talking about learning, that's just not how it's going to be. Um, in Germany, in a city, if you're going to learn German, you need to push for it because uh, the world won't make you learn it. Yeah. And so I think that's just yeah. a really important key distinction. Yeah. And I and I think that my next point that I'm going to make yeah. like continues to prove that point. So after I took my B1 test, I was like, oh, this is a this is a roller coaster that only goes up. I'm <laughs> I'll on just my, keep learning forever. I'm on my way to B2, baby. <laughs> um, and I, she was not. Oh no. Um, because I, I quickly realized that speaking and listening to children was very helpful to get me to be one, but mm -hmm. children speak very slowly and very simply. Right. And I kind of hit a wall. I wasn't really getting any better at German um, because the B2 level, like I said, you need to be able to speak yeah. very abstractly. You need to be able to read kind of like scientific articles right. and give your opinions and re retorts and counter arguments. Um, so I acknowledge this and you had had so much uh, luck with mm -hmm. Goethe that I decided yeah. I wanted to take an immersion course also. Goethe's too expensive. <laughs> it's really expensive. <laughs> so I went with Edeltraud. Goethe is about a thousand euros per, Something like that, yeah. per, per month course. course. Edeltraud is a nonprofit. They're 295 euros uh, yep. per uh, month course. Mm -hmm. So I did that for six months. This was during the lockdown. Every Much single easier morning. to do when it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and it was during lockdown. And I, so I, I did it online, which wasn't as good as being in person. Yeah, but it, was, person just, really it nice. was still really, really good, though. So it was about, yeah, you know, sure. four hours a day. Uh, four days a week of German only intensive courses. Right. And so a lot of my insecurities, I, I felt very insecure about speaking on the phone, speaking to adults, speaking about higher level issues. Um, mm -hmm. Listening was also very difficult for me. I feel like a lot of those insecurities were sort of wiped away just by taking a really right. high level um, intensive, in, intensive course. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where I am now. I'm definitely B1, somewhere approaching B2. I haven't taken a test. I feel like you could. Uh, Camille always downplays her language learning ability. You, you try to act like you speak like me when you're so much better. I don't know. I mean, I, I have taken um, job interviews all yeah. in German. I can speak on the phone in German. I can do a lot of conversations with adults in German, but I, just, I don't feel great about my level. Mm. I don't know. So I think I just accidentally also summarized where I am going forward. Where are you going forward? Well, it, like you said, I think you did a great job of It's all about your lifestyle. You know, you hit a wall with your lifestyle. But essentially, I joined a, a German company not that long ago. And so they've started uh, really nice, actually, uh, paying for weekly lessons, uh, private lessons, kind of one on one with an instructor, uh, which is really helpful. Uh, I mess around with a lot of apps. I read some very easy books. Those are all things that I think would make for good content yes. for another video. And I, I do follow a bunch of German meme pages. And I don't understand <laughs> them, but I'm trying. But so there's a lot of that. So kind of following a bit of immersion, day to day living, uh, private instructor to help me a bit but the thing that holds me back is that fundamentally my lifestyle does not require a lot of German. Um, I like to joke that I kind of have the world's best tourist German. I think my accent's not the worst anymore. Uh, at least my accent is better than an A1, A2 accent, mm -hmm, I think. Definitely. And so I've gotten into a lot of conversations where I'm holding onto the pull too damn long. And they're talking about stuff I do not understand uh, because I think they think I'm better than I am. So that's kind of where, I, like what my current ability is. And because my lifestyle, um, I guess to go into that, that's a small smidge. I work with a lot of executives in and around Germany, Austria, and Switzerland who all speak English really, really well. Their time is expensive uh, and I don't want to sound like an idiot. So we often just switch into English. And because of that, um, I, I'm often intimidated by the gap. The amount of German I would have to learn to be able to handle my job in German is so intimidating. Uh, but we are sticking around Germany for a little bit longer and I do want better than just tourist German. And so that's why I'm taking the private lessons and stuff like that. And if I could find a way to take an intensive course with my job, I would be interested, but it's really hard. Um, I think definitely when you get here and you're getting settled, tr just make yourself take one of those courses because the further you go living here, the, the harder it gets to just, yeah. you know, life gets in the way. Yeah, I really wish, I, I was so interested in trying to get a job immediately. Yeah. Um, I really wish I had just taken some time, like three months to take intensive courses. But again, I think I also felt like, 
felt like um, mm -hmm. immersion learning would be more helpful than it was. Yeah, and, and it I, just isn't. Yeah, in Munich, I know in that's Munich. not the case for a lot of other places, but in Munich, again, people just speak ridiculously high levels of English. Yeah, and then when you travel, you often don't find yourself having crazy abstract conversations uh, while you're traveling, especially doing the traveling that we do. We're often hiking and obviously the lockdown. And I think coronavirus in many ways has hindered our learning because when you're locked down and you can't be meeting new people, uh, when are you supposed to practice German? Uh, so I think all of those things have, have made kind of a, an interesting situation, but we are continuing to, yeah. to practice yeah. and get better. With all that being said, oh God, it's time why? for the German reveal. Okay, so we are gonna be showing off our German levels. Like I said, Ben is like between A1 and A2. I'm between- I like to hope I'm between A2 and B1. I don't know, you haven't taken a test. But I haven't and taken a test. And I'm somewhere between B1 and B2. So we've both sort of chosen a Thema to talk about. So Ben's <laughs> gonna be telling us about himself. Yeah, das ist ein uh, klassischer uh, A1 oder A2 Thema. Und so, uh, so fast ist das, wie ist Ben? <laughs> Was ist Ben? Uh, aber erst, ich habe ein Problem und das ist, uh, ich habe nicht so viel Bier, so ich muss Wein trinken, nur uh, jetzt. Ich muss jetzt, yes. ich muss jetzt yes. Wein trinken. Oh, sehr schwer. Uh, so ja, yeah, so ich bin Ben Harrison. Um, ich habe hier in uh, München seit drei Jahren gewohnt. Uh, hier in München, ich habe uh, uh, in zwei Wohnungen gewohnt. Uh, hier, und das ist die uh, zweite Wohnung und ich denke, die zweite Wohnung ist ein bisschen besser als die erste Wohnung. Uh, wir haben uh, hier in dieser Wohnung für ein Jahr gewohnt und die andere für zwei Jahre. Um, ich denke aus, dass, die, uh, dass meine Katze, uh, denken Sie das auch, dass diese uh, Wohnung ist besser ist, uh, weil uh, wir haben große Fenster, dass die Katzen uh, mögen uh, durch Sehen oder nicht? I think schauen. Schauen. Was ist schauen? Ja, weil man TV, Fern Fernseher schaut. So, like, oh, yeah? you watch. Oh, I think. I don't know. You can tell watch us. Watch and see. Maybe that's wrong. Und ja, yeah, so meine erste Katze, um, er heißt Biscuits und er ist total schwarz. Uh, er ist meine erste Katze, kommt aus uh, Virginia. Und ja, uh, yeah, das war, uh, wo wir haben. Uh, getrefft. Um, <lacht> uh, er ist eine sehr süße Katze. Er ist meine Lieblingskatze und er ist sehr nett, sehr toll. Uh, meine zweite Katze, das ist Truffles. Uh, Truffles ist nicht meine Katze. Uh, Truffles ist deine Katze. Uh, Truffles uh, ja, mag mir nicht. Und uh, das ist okay. Ich mag Truffles nicht. Und die dritte Katze, das ist Rosemary uh, Pigs, <lacht> Rosemary Spriggs, und uh, sie ist meine Prinzessin. Sie ist oh, sehr schön. Oh, ich liebe Rosemary auch. Und Truffles ist auch gut. Und ja, uh, yeah. und Rosemary ist sehr interessant, weil Rosemary kommt aus Griechenland, uh, Kreta. Und uh, ich denke, das ist uh, sehr cool. Das ist ein ganzer, was ist Story? Ganz geschickt für einen anderen Tag, ein anderes Video. Und ja, uh, yeah, so ich denke, das ist alles. You know, ich bin Ben, ich habe einen YouTube-Kanal, ich habe drei Katzen und das ist alles. So, yeah, I don't know, I left in a lot of errors um, because I thought it would be more interesting if instead of like rehearsing something, because you can rehearse anything, you know, with enough Google Translate and looking up in a dictionary, I could say something that sounds way better than what I'm capable of. But um, that is what I sound like after one beer uh, with no rehearsals, just trying to talk about me. It's pretty rough, but um, you know, it's, it's a lot more than what I used to be able to say. And so for you, why don't you do something a little bit harder than talking about yourself? Why don't you talk about your experience learning German and your hopes and your dreams? Ja, okay, so ich habe ja früher gesagt, ich bin die Camille und ich bin jetzt zwischen die B1 und B2 Stufe. Ich fühle mich, dass mein Deutsch nicht so gut ist. Eigentlich äh, fühle mich, dass mein Deutsch sehr schwächlich oh, ist. Um, und das ist, weil, wenn ich spreche, äh, höre ähm, ich 
viele Grammatikfehler. Ich weiß, dass mein Daddy und das sind nicht richtig. Es ist so schwierig für tausend so schwierig. Äh, Nomen dieser Daddy und das im Kopf zu bleiben. Ja. Und es gibt keine ähm, Regeln. Um, für diese so, ich weiß, dass ich bin immer nicht wichtig und das ist mehr schwierig, wenn man muss die um, Endungen benutzen. Mm -hmm. Zum Beispiel sage ich eine, eine, meines, einen, <lacht> denen, ja. bla bla bla, so weiter und so fort. So, ich weiß, dass das, dass das eine große Loch in meiner um, Deutsch um, Kenntnis ist, aber es ist so schwierig zu verbessern. Und, um, so, jetzt habe ich gesagt, dass ich bin eine Englischlehrerin, so höre ich viel Deutsch, aber nur von den Grundschulen. Ich habe eine Wand getroffen, keine Ahnung, ob man das auf Deutsch sagt, aber auf Englisch wir sagen das, hey, I hit a wall. Und so habe ich viele Vorstellungsgespräche mit deutscher Firma gemacht, weil ich weiß, dass ähm, muss ich bei ein, einer deutschen Firma jeden Tag für acht Stunden pro ähm, Tag ähm, ganz, die ganze Woche Deutsch hören und sprechen, dann kann ich mein Deutsch verbessern. Vielleicht kann ich die B2 und C1 vielleicht äh, Stufe ähm, genau. <lacht> äh, bekommen. Ja, es, es ist zu schwierig, schwierig. Äh, Uh, ohne einen Job, ich denke, in meiner Meinung, um, eine hohe Stufe zu bekommen. Mm -hmm. ja. ja, das ist alles. Ja, viel, viele Fehler gemacht, aber ja. hoffentlich die uh, Publikum, dieser YouTube-Kanal, um, wird uh, sehr nett sein. <lacht> <lacht> I hope you guys are nice as well. Just to reiterate, um, we didn't practice this at all. We no. just decided what the theme was going to be yep. between us. We we want to be more truthful about what and yeah. what we would look like, you know. Um, yeah, if you try, if you meet us on the street and you try to get us to speak German, that's pretty much what you're going to be getting. Um, be that as that may. I, I don't like it either. <laughs> So anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, again, this is kind of just our second time doing this sort of format. If you're still watching, thank you. I mean, that's pretty cool of you. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. But if you're still here, you've probably already done that by now. So thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.